All right, it's time for another 2021 college football schedule preview up today. The Clemson Taters. Let's go. Uh, now, maybe you're starting to pick up on the pattern here. I did Georgia and Florida. Then I did Texas and Oklahoma, two SEC teams, then two Big 12 teams. Today, Clemson from the ACC. Tomorrow, the Miami Hurricanes. All this guy does is talk about Miami. Yeah, uh, Uncle U over here. Anyway, uh, type about it. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, Clemson today, Miami tomorrow. The next two after that is going to be Ohio State and Michigan. After that, Washington and Oregon. And then we'll rotate back to the SEC, trying to mix it up some rather than just doing a bunch of SEC teams and then a bunch of ACC teams. Try to mix it up a little bit, get some teams from all the conferences involved here and mix it up. But like I said today, Clemson Tater time. Hey, good morning. It's Uncle Lou here. That's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on YouTube today. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it also in tune addition to that as well. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Did you know I post college football videos almost every single day of the year? It's true, and some of them are even watchable. You may watch this video and say, well, this, this was completely unwatchable. Okay, I'll give you that. Check out another couple of videos, though. I think if you watch two or three, you'll find at least one that you consider to be watchable. Give this video a thumbs up. It's free to do. Doesn't cost any money or take any time at all, but it's a huge help to me and the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. If you're a Clemson fan, share this video out somewhere so maybe some more people can see it. Even if you hate the video, how about a thumbs up for my Mormons vs. Mullets t-shirt? And of course, the Mullets 1-0 against the Mormons. That's right. Anyway, let's get started with this Clemson video. All right, of course, everybody knows Clemson 10-2 and in 2020. Here's their 2020 schedule. Normally, I like to compare the last year's schedule to the current schedule to try to figure out, is the current schedule harder, easier, uh, whatever, comparing non-con games uh, from the previous year to the current year and things like that. Of course, it's hard to do that this year because last year was such a weird season with the scheduling right uh, a lot of conferences chose to play conference only games some conferences the acc included um, allowed one non-con game the sec 10 sec games it's not an apples and apples comparison this season trying to compare a team's uh, schedule from the previous season to this season but we'll do the best we can here but clemson 10 and 2 of course in 2020 trevor lawrence and travis Etienne's last year they both had great years. They'll be uh, millionaires here pretty soon when the draft comes around. But they lose both of those guys. Got to replace them. 10-2, and two, losses on the road at Notre Dame during the regular season. Of course, Trevor Lawrence sat that game out with an injury, that game and the following game. So Clemson starting quarterback this year made his first start in that game last year at Notre Dame. And he played pretty good. I think he had 400 yards or, or close to it or, or something like that. Uh, the game got kind of weird at the end. I actually think Clemson should have won that. I think Clemson blew it. Uh, Travis Etienne in particular ran out of bounds uh, with a couple of minutes to go in that game when he should have just fell down in bounds to bleed some time. Anyway, if you if you saw the game, uh, there's no need in getting into it. Point is, uh, they lost the game. Now, to be fair, that was the ukulele, their new quarterback. That was his first start. And it can't be easy uh, to make your first start ever in college on the road at Notre Dame and come away with a win. I mean, who... Who could possibly do that? Who could make their first ever college start as a true freshman on the road in South Bend and come away with a win? I mean, I just don't see how that would be possible for anyone to do, especially a really, really, really good quarterback like the ukulele. So let's cut him a little bit of slack. Like I said, he played well, played well the following week, too. Uh, in a win, uh, they won that game. Well, they were off, and then they played at Florida State. Or wait a minute, did he... Maybe it was the week before. Anyway, he started a couple of games or he came in for an injured Trevor Lawrence, whatever it was. Anyway, uh, Clemson then cruised through the remainder of the uh, regular season. Their only non-con game was uh, week two against Citadel, beat them 49 to nothing. Uh, pretty much destroyed everybody else they played. Syracuse, 47 to 21. Boston College was a close game, 34 to 28. The Florida State game ended up getting canceled. Florida State had uh, COVID issues. Uh, rolled over Pitt, rolled over Virginia Tech, and rolled over Notre Dame in a rematch in the ACC title game. Notre Dame, winless in program history 
in conference title games. That's sad. People tell you all, oh, Notre Dame won one of the best programs in the history of college football. Yeah, winless in conference championship games. That's sad. Uh, Rudy was offsides also in two. And then, of course, uh, Clemson lost in round one of the playoffs to Ohio State, 49-28. You know, if those uh, I don't want to take anything away from Ohio State, they were they were a great team. And so what I'm about to say is not taking anything away from Ohio State. Everything went right for Ohio State in that game. And Clemson just never could get going for whatever reason. I watched every Ohio State game last year. That was by far the best game they played all year, especially on defense. Ohio State's defense struggled a lot during the year, particularly in pass defense. And, uh, you know, I expected Clemson and Trevor Lawrence to score a lot of points in this game against the Ohio State defense that we had seen all year. But for whatever reason, everything came together for Ohio State in that game. And again, that that's credit to Ohio State. If they would have played 10 times, though, I think they would have been the majority of those games would have been much closer. But again, credit to Ohio State. They won the game. That's all that matters. That means Clemson has lost the last two major postseason games they've played, uh, which is really sad. They got blown out in their last postseason game of 2019, and they got blown out in their postseason game in 2020. Two-game, uh, major postseason game, losing streak for the Tater, man. That's sad. Lost your last game of the year. And when we look at next year's schedule, you'll see the possibility of a two-game losing streak is very real. Let's do that now. Let's put up the 2021 schedule. Now, obviously, I'm a Georgia fan. So I understand that a lot of Clemson fans are going to watch this video and they're going to, you know, everything I say, they're just going to say, well, he's a Georgia fan and that's why. There's nothing I can do to change your mind if you feel that way. Georgia is my favorite team. I don't try to hide it or deny it, but I'm just a college football fan. And I've been very high on Clemson for years, uh, you, you know, going back pre Deshaun Watson. Clemson has been one of, if not the best program in college football over the last six or seven years. Of course, you got Alabama. No one else is even close other than Clemson, though. And you could argue that in the last three or four years, Clemson may be a little better than Alabama overall. I'm not going to get into that. But point is, I've never had a reason to down Clemson or hate on Clemson. I'm going to try to do my best to keep this video uh, down the middle and as honest, as fair as I can. Obviously, I crack some jokes and, and, and do a little bit of trash talk. To me, trash talking is just a part of college football. Uh, but I'm going to do my best here to try to be uh, honest and unbiased in this uh, video. But here you go. Here's the 2021 schedule. All right, and of course, everybody knows probably the biggest game of the college football season, definitely the biggest game in week one, probably the biggest non-con game of the year. Georgia takes on Clemson week one this year in a neutral site game in Charlotte. These are going to be two top five teams in the preseason. I don't care how much you hate Clemson or how much you hate Georgia or love Clemson or love Georgia or whatever or feel indifferent about them uh, totally uh, and completely. Every single preseason poll that comes out is going to have Clemson and Georgia ranked in the top five. Some may have Clemson as high as two. Uh, Some may have Georgia as high as three or four, but whatever, however you want to say it. uh, These are two top five teams. The only thing I know for sure about this game in terms of who might win or lose, and this isn't a prediction video. I do prediction videos in June where, you know, I'll give you a game by game prediction for every single game on the schedule for about 50 or 60 different teams. The only thing I know for sure about this game, though, anybody that says Georgia has no chance or Clemson has no chance is just an idiot. Uh, These are two top five teams. These are two great programs, two great teams. Georgia returns all of its offense, has some questions and things to replace on defense. Clemson returns all of its defense and has some questions and things to replace on offense. Neither team is perfect. Both are legitimate top five teams that recruited a ridiculous level. Both of these teams are loaded with future NFL players on both sides of the ball. I think this will be a pretty good game. Now, a lot of debate lately, who needs this win more, Georgia or Clemson? I, there's arguments can be made both ways, in my opinion. Um, when, when, when we start to look at the rest of this Clemson schedule here, if they lose this Georgia game, it's going to be real easy for voters, fans, pollsters, whatever to go. Well, Clemson lost to the only good team they played. And I'll talk more about that in a second. So maybe you say, well, Clemson really needs this win. Georgia, I think, really needs this win, too. They have a little bit more difficult regular season schedule than uh, Clemson does. Um, You know, playing somebody like a Florida, an Auburn, uh, a couple other teams like that. Probably more difficult of a game than anything else on Clemson's schedule. So you say, well, Georgia needs to win this one because it's harder for them to win out if they lose. 
maybe. The SEC, of course, gets a little bit of benefit of the doubt that maybe the ACC doesn't get in terms of strength of schedule and things like that. Georgia needs a big win, too, in my opinion. I consider the Sugar Bowl uh, or, or the uh, New Year's Six games a big win, but I know I'm in the minority. Less and less people are starting to care about those games. I think Georgia's win over Cincinnati was a pretty good win. Uh, Cincinnati was a legitimate top 10 team. It wasn't a fluke. Uh, they were the best defense we played all year. I mean, they were a legit team. And if you, if you don't know that or understand that, then uh, maybe your understanding of college football is a little bit limited. You just look at the name Cincinnati and assume they're not that good. They were pretty good. Uh, Georgia was lucky to win that game, and they did. But, you know, Georgia has uh, sort of in the last four or five years lost some pretty big games. Of course, the national title game in 2017, the SEC title game in 2018 and 2019, lost to Florida in the regular season last year, a top 10 team. Georgia needs a big win. Clemson, I mean, Clemson gets some big wins, right? Won the ACC title game umpteen years in a row. They've made the playoffs a million years in a row. I think arguments can be made both ways, that, uh, the, the whole who needs the win more thing. This will be a great game. Forget the fact that Georgia's my – listen, uh, UTEP could be my favorite team. I'm still watching this game week one. You're watching it too. Everyone will be watching this game week one. This is a great game. This will be a great game. Clemson and Georgia have played a lot. Throughout the years, Georgia has a decided advantage in the overall series. Georgia leads the overall series 42-18. to 18. That has nothing to do with this year's game, though. point I'm trying to make is Clemson and Georgia have played a lot over the years. They used to play a lot more uh, than they do now. Now they play about two times every 10 years. Uh, now we play them about five times in the next 10 years right now, but typically we've been playing them about, uh, tw- uh, you know, uh, twice every 10 years or so for about the last 30 years. Rarely, though, you, you have to go back to the early 80s, really, to find a time when both Clemson and Georgia have been this good and this highly ranked uh, when they've played. Uh, the last home-and-home home series that these two teams had, they split. Uh, Clemson won their home game, and then Georgia won their home game the following year. You go back to the early 2000s, Georgia uh, swept a home-and-home home series with Clemson two games to none. So three and one this century and, you know, sort of the last 20 years type of thing. Georgia has the three to one lead over Clemson. But again, none of that has anything to do with this game. Clemson is an an amazing team. They're a legitimate national title contender every single year for the last four or five years. That'll be a great game. You move on to your next uh, non-con game, which is South Carolina State, a lower classification in-state school. I like when teams play um, other teams from within their own state. A lot of conferences outside of the SEC and the ACC knock the SEC and the ACC for doing this. I don't mind it. I don't I don't mind seeing Clemson play South Carolina State this year or Citadel last year. Let's not forget a South Carolina State, a Citadel. These teams are not making the millions and millions and millions of dollars a year that Clemson is making. Right. Without these types of games, it would be hard for somebody like South Carolina State financially to survive a football season. They get a huge payday, South Carolina State does when they play these games, or to Citadel, or in Georgia's uh, case when we used to play Georgia Southern, or if we were to play Georgia State, uh, or or Mercer, or whatever, these smaller in-state schools. I don't have a problem with these types of games, even though a lot of people outside of the SEC and the ACC seem to cry about it nonstop. Uh, But clearly, that'll be an easy win for Clemson there. Then you open up your ACC schedule at home against Georgia Tech. I I should have gone back and looked. I know Clemson and Georgia Tech have started off the season in terms of their ACC matchups uh, for three or four years in a row now, at least. Is that something that's always been the case? And maybe I just didn't realize it until recently. Is is Georgia Tech and Clemson always the first ACC game for each school? Because it seems like it's been like that. Lately, Georgia Tech, you know, still in kind of a rebuild mode with Jeff Collins. I mean, he inherited a roster that was filled with triple option players. You can't turn an entire roster over overnight. You need several recruiting classes. I think he's going into year three now. Last year, of course, a very weird year with no offseason. So maybe uh, give him a mulligan on that. They were really bad. Uh, They'll have their quarterback back. He'll be a sophomore this year with a full year starting under his belt. He's got to stop turning the ball over there. He was a turnover machine. He's exciting to watch. He can run around and make a lot of plays with his legs. And he can make some plays with his arms, too. But he's got to cut down the turnovers. I mean, no matter how good Georgia Tech is this year or thinks they can be this year, if you're turning the ball over three times a game, you're going to struggle to get to a bowl game. And 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 that's kind of what happened with them last year. Uh, Clemson will be a big favorite there. First road game. At NC State, NC State is to me is one of these ACC teams. There's six, seven, eight ACC teams to me 
that you kind of can put them in a hat, shake them up, pull one out, and it doesn't matter what name you pull out. They're kind of all the, the same team. You know, in, NC State, Duke, Pitt, Boston College, Syracuse, Virginia, Virginia Tech. These are seven-win teams. Now, sometimes they win eight or nine because they're playing all the other seven-win teams. Sometimes they win three or four because they're losing to some of the seven-win teams. But they're just they're, – they're hardly ever – terrible like you know one in 11 or two and 10 or whatever they're also hardly ever great hardly ever 10 and 2 or 11 and 1 it just kind of a stuck in the middle type of thing that's where i put nc state and at home the next week against boston college two games clemson should and probably will win then you get your bye week a little early in the season uh was that after your fifth game I, i guess that's okay it's about halfway through the season october 9th is your bye week come out of your bye week and got back to back road games this can be tricky sometimes. When I look at these schedules, I, I like to try to you know look for possible trap games or possible games that a team could lose that maybe you don't see coming. Um, a difficult stretch of two or three games in a row. You know things that have the potential to trip a team up. Clemson's better than every team on their schedule. I, even if you think Georgia is better than Clemson, it wouldn't be by much talent wise. I mean, you know, so I don't, and again, that's not the point of this video to argue who's better between Clemson and Georgia, but. Clemson clearly better than everyone else on their schedule. Hard to beat everyone you're better than uh, over the course of a year, though. I mean, that's why you see so few undefeated teams. I mean, it does happen, and when you do, you win the national title. But almost every single team in America loses at least one game a year that maybe you didn't expect them to lose. I try to find games like that when I look at these schedules. Wait, You're way better than Syracuse. You're way better than Pitt. But back-to-back -back road games, these are two pretty long trips, having to travel from South Carolina to upstate New York for that Syracuse game, back to South Carolina to practice for a week, and then back up to Pennsylvania to take on Pitt. A lot of traveling, back-to-back -back road games. You know, you know, I, I don't expect Clemson to lose either of those games, but again, when you do these schedule previews and you're looking over a schedule, you try to find places where maybe a team slips up. Then you get the game against Florida State, which used to be a game of the year type situation in the ACC. But Florida State is, it seems to be falling further and further down in a hole. They're another team that it's hard to understand how Florida State got so bad so fast. Um, it, it really is. I mean, in 2013, when they went undefeated with Jameis Winston and won the national title, I think 21 of those 22 starters ended up starting in the NFL, not just getting drafted, but starting in the NFL. I mean, they were just absolutely loaded. I mean, it was like, it was Alabama level talent in 2013 at Florida State. To think about where they were then and where they are now, it's hard to imagine Florida State falling that far that fast, but somehow they managed to do it. A bad coaching hire, certainly one of the reasons why the Willie Taggart thing was just a disaster. They had one of, if not the worst offensive lines in all of football for two or three years in a row. They haven't been able to get the quarterback situation figured out really since Jameis Winston. We'll see. Uh, you know, they, they got the new coaching staff in there. I, I, you know, how's it going to go? We'll see. Last, I don't count much of last year when you look at new coaching staffs because you had no offseason to implement new game plans, philosophies, playbooks, those kinds of things. It's, it's hard to look at anything Florida State did last year or any team with a new coaching staff last year and say, well, that means they're going to be terrible. We just don't know. Hard to imagine Florida State can get much worse than what we've seen the last three or four years. But in my mind, they're still several years away from getting anywhere close to Clemson. You would assume Clemson would be a significant favorite in this game at home against Florida State. On the road at Louisville. Louisville's an interesting team to me. They had a pretty good offense last year, but couldn't stop a nosebleed defensively. And then a couple of weeks, the offense didn't show up, and they lost, you're sitting there scratching how they lose that game. I mean, I think, I think they, didn't they lose to Georgia Tech. Louisville was a much better team than Georgia Tech, but they just didn't show up, and they got beat. And uh, that's sort of the problem. Um, you know, Louisville's a, a good team. They're nowhere near great. And when you're good, you got to show up every single week. You can't just stroll into a game, go through the motions and expect to win, even against a team like Georgia Tech. But they are an interesting team to me. I like the coaching staff there. I like a lot of the pieces they have in place there. They haven't really been able to put it together over the course of an entire season. And again, this is a game where Clemson should and probably will be a significant favorite. But the potential, I think, to at least be an interesting game. I mean, let's be honest. When you look at this Clemson schedule, well, let's wait till we get to the end, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, then you have your uh, another non-con game against UConn, November uh, 13th. Your last ACC game of the year you get at home, November 20th. 
um, against Wake Forest shouldn't be much of a problem for a team like Clemson. And then the in-state rivalry, the traditional last game of the year that unfortunately we didn't get to see last year, Clemson at South Carolina. Again, this is a situation where, yeah, it's a rivalry game. And, you know, you heard the, oh, anything can happen in a rivalry game. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I, I don't give South Carolina really much of a chance in this game. Another team with a new coaching staff heading into this year. They, they just got a lot of work to do and are nowhere near Clemson right now. I know you have to play them there. Weird things happen. I get it. But come on, Clemson will be a three touchdown favorite in that game. Uh, so that's the schedule. Now, but I, and I already can see the comments coming. Oh, my God, uh, the Cupcake Conference. Look at this pitiful schedule outside of Georgia, blah, blah, blah. There's not a single ranked team. And you're probably right. Let's, I mean, you tell me who on this list is ranked uh, outside of Georgia, not South Carolina State, not Georgia Tech, not NC State, not Boston College, not Syracuse, not Pitt, not Florida State, maybe Louisville if they end up being better than people think. UConn, no. Wake Forest, no. South Carolina, no. There's nothing Clemson can do about their conference schedule. There's nothing they can do. It's, it's not Clemson's job to make sure that the rest of the ACC is great. Okay? So while I agree that Clemson has a relatively easy path to the uh, ACC title game, it's not their fault. I mean, what else do you want Clemson to do? They've been scheduling SEC teams every single year. They had a home-and-home home with Texas A&M. They had a home-and-home home with Auburn. They play South Carolina every single year. This year, they're playing Georgia, a top five team. I don't know what else you want Clemson to do. Clemson can't recruit for Duke. They can't recruit for Louisville or Florida State or Pitt or Boston College or NC State. It's not Clemson's job to go out and make sure that Wake Forest has a top 25 team this year. There's nothing Clemson can do about that. Clemson's in the ACC. They have to play every team in their division. And then they rotate the teams from the other division. Clemson doesn't pick this ACC schedule. This is what Clemson is given. So that being said, that being said, after Clemson, start naming the teams in the ACC that you think are next in line, the best besides Clemson. Who are they? North Carolina, not on this schedule. Miami, not on this schedule. One of the Virginia teams maybe after that, not on this schedule. So while that's not Clemson's fault and there's nothing they can do about it, and I don't think Clemson should be blamed for having, you know, a quote unquote easy schedule, it's also true that this is an easy schedule. Both of those things can be true. It is an easy schedule. They avoid the other, you know, they're the best team in the ACC. They avoid the next three teams, the, the second, the third, and the fourth team. They avoid those teams. Uh, they don't have to play them. But there's nothing they can do about that. So both of those things can be true. So like the fans that say, well, this is pitiful. Look at Clemson. They shouldn't be allowed in the playoff with a schedule like this. That's ridiculous. They're playing who they have to play in the ACC. They're not choosing that ACC schedule. And then in the part of the schedule that they are choosing, they're playing two SEC teams, one on the road, South Carolina, and one in a neutral site, Georgia. One of those two teams is ranked in the top five. Georgia. There's so the part of the schedule that Clemson can control, they're doing a pretty good job. And not just this year. Like I said, they, they home and homes with Texas AM, home and homes with Auburn. I mean, just go back and look. Clemson has not been dodging difficult non-con games. So the idea that, oh, this, this is unfair and Clemson, look at Clemson and blah blah. No, I mean, that's just insane. Now, to the Clemson fan. You can't deny that this is a pretty easy schedule. Like I said, both, the, both of those things can be true at the same time. Clemson catches a break with the ACC scheduling. Again, not their choosing. Nothing they can do about it. Clemson didn't decide that North Carolina and Miami were going to be pretty good teams just because we're not playing them this year. Just so happens they're pretty good teams and they don't fall on the Clemson schedule this year. There's nothing Clemson can do about that. But it's also true this is a pretty easy schedule. Both of those things are true. There you go to Clemson schedule for 2021. It, 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 to me, it looks like a trip to the playoffs. I'm going to be honest. I, I know there's been some talk lately about, oh, Clemson has to go undefeated. I don't think so. Even if Clemson loses to Georgia, even if Clemson loses by two touchdowns to Georgia, which I don't think will happen. I think this will be a close game no matter who wins. 
even if they lose that game at Georgia, Clemson has built up enough clout, enough credibility over the last four, five, six years. They can lose week one, win their next 11 games, right? Go to the ACC title game at 11 and one, win, finish the season 12 and one, ACC champs, they're getting in the playoffs. So the idea that, oh, Clemson has to beat Georgia or they have to go undefeated, I just don't agree with that. They, they built up enough of a reputation, enough of a we belong sort of uh, reputation. They can afford a loss. We saw that last year. They lost to Notre Dame. Now they got a chance to beat, you know, they got a chance to sort of, uh, you know, the revenge game in the ACC title game. If they were to lose to Georgia, they wouldn't get that chance, at least not in the ACC title game. Maybe they meet again in a playoff. I don't think it matters who loses the week one game in terms of making the playoffs. If Georgia loses week one and goes 11 and one and wins the SEC, they're getting in. If Clemson loses uh, week one and goes 11 and one, but wins the ACC, they're getting in. Um, you know, now you have much smaller margin of error to either to whichever team loses in week one, because hard to get in with two losses. Uh, but in any case, that's the schedule. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you want to try to guess their record down below, you can. Uh, like I said, I, I do another series of prediction videos starting in June where I go game by game and I actually pick a winner and a loser for every single game. And, uh, you know, I pick out trap games and, oh, oh well, you know, you know, at Syracuse, at Pitt, back to back weeks, followed up by kind of a rivalry game against Florida State. Maybe the game at Pitt becomes kind of a trap game. You got to travel two weeks in a row. You play Pitt right before you play Florida State. So stuff like that is what I'll do what I do in June, and I pick a winner and a loser, and I'll tell you what I actually think Clemson's record will be for 2000 and uh, for 2021, including that Georgia-Clemson game. But anyway, I really appreciate you watching. Share this video somewhere if you're a Clemson fan or whatever and you enjoyed it. Share it in your Facebook groups or on your Twitter or whatever. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I'll be back tomorrow to do this same thing for the Miami Hurricanes. But until then, though, Mormons versus Mullets. Mullets want to know. Have a good morning.